I had some time today. What's good, y'all? I pray everybody's well and good. It looks like I have started or starting a semi-fire uh, on this following post posted by a pastor, I think in South Carolina, phenomenal preacher, Brandon Thomas Crowley, Dr. Brandon Thomas Todd. Here's what his post suggested, and I want to kind of dive into more. Uh, and if you don't know me, I'm DK Hammers. I'm a digital theologian, bridge in technology and theology into one space. And I just had the distinct pleasure to be able to talk about topics like these because I work with it every single day. Here's what he says, Brandon Crowley. Dr. Brandon Crowley says this. Dear pastors, FYI, visitors and potential new members are scouting your live streams and social media presence to choose a spiritual home and a church and churches to visit. Embrace digital, embrace digital evangelism. That's what he says. And so I reposted this because yeah, you should wanna embrace um, technology that impacts people on a broader scale. And so I think sometimes leaders are afraid to kind of get into that space because they lack the understanding of what it takes to do something like this. They think it's simply turning on a button, hitting enter, cutting, things of like that nature, and that is what's going to get you where you're, trying, where you're trying to go. That's absolutely not the case. There is some intentionality that you need to do this. Do me a huge favor if you're watching this, go ahead and share this with somebody that needs to see it and hear this type of message. And so I wanted to post about why it's important to understand that intro, the internal struggle with live stream digital evangelism and its social impact. Hey, baby girl, you're not off work, so God bless your ministry. <laughs> and it's, uh, its impact, and its impact is huge. Many of you, who hear this, watching this, for two years, you could not even enter your sanctuaries. You couldn't even go into your churches with a group of people for two years or plus for some. And here it is, not even a year almost removed, and many of us are griping, many of us are disheveled about how this technology works in the current church. People, we got opportunity here. And I don't think we're paying attention to it. So uh, my friend Terrence L. Thomas um, out of Chicago, he mentioned that the fact that sometimes, hey, you don't have the financial situation to be able to outsource that to someone. Um, and volunteers are scarce. And I think the Bible talks clearly about the harvest being this much, but the laborers being that much. I would the Bible say. And so we have an opportunity to, if we can't afford, we have to train. We have to bring somebody in, train, and get folks together, or we have to do it ourselves in order to connect people to the gospel digitally. It's not hard, people. It just takes some level of work and consistency. And once you have it set, it's standard, it pretty much is ready to go locked and loaded. It does take some preparing for that. So I wanted to talk about some internal struggles. I want to talk about volunteers not being able to have certain people, certain times, certain assets as other people may have, may not have. I understand that. That's a real thing. And it ain't just a real thing in a black experience. It's a real thing for everybody. Everybody is struggling with not having volunteers. I remember being a youth pastor um, at New Hope Baptist Church, Discipleship Central, Various places I've been youth and youth ministry. And you know what our number one problem was? Our number one problem was volunteers. So everybody's number one problem in church is having laborers or having people that will partner and serve alongside. Well, I was talking to a friend of mine from New Jersey, and he and I were talking about what it would take to get some of these volunteers. The reason why people are not volunteering, some of y'all don't care about them. You just don't, you have them come up to a cold church. You don't feed them. You don't care about them. You don't check on them. You don't see about their family. You just want them to work. 
work, work, and then work some more. That ain't God, man. Got to balance that out. That's an internal struggle. We don't have the people, but we have the heart and we have the want to. Internal struggle. Right? Internal struggle is not only do we have the people, we have the want to, but we don't have knowledgeable resources to help us. Let me tell y'all something. For two years, we figured it out. But if you're not trying, you're not trying to figure it out either. You got to want to try to figure it out. And you can't look at somebody who has a church that has 3,000 members, 4,000, 10,000 members, and then expect to deliver like them. You can't. Stop comparing yourself to these people because it's really hurting you. Do what you can. Do what you've been assigned to. Connect with who you've been called to connect with. And let God do the rest. Some seeds don't fall on good ground. Some seeds fall on stony ground. But the seed thrower. Thank you, James, throw for this. The seed thrower never gets tired of throwing seeds. So pastor, leader, if you're listening, understand my voice, don't get tired of throwing your seed. Somebody's watching you. Somebody is respecting how you're moving and they want a partner. Be praying for the lost. Be praying for good help. Have a system to train the good help. Internal struggle, right? Some of y'all have bad systems. And you're expecting excellence. If excellence is the floor, get your systems right on the floor. I couldn't tell on my production and all that. I didn't even do that. See, it's right behind me. Let me see if I turn this way. It's right behind me. I got all that stuff on. I didn't want to do that. I can turn it on right now and have quality stuff. But I've invested in myself. Invested. Some of y'all don't want to invest. Y'all want people to give you stuff every 25 minutes. That's not how that works. You got to be willing to invest into this thing called digital evangelism, social media, marketing. That's really what this is. Marketing. How do you understand marketing? How does marketing impact your church and the people around it? Marketing. Those things will help the internal struggle of live stream, digital evangelism, social and the social impact. That's it. Start talking to people that's been there and done that. Y'all, I've been in the business either for myself or with other churches for years. For years. For years. People who know me know that. For years. And the churches I work with. Secret. They not hurting. I'm going to say it again. The churches I work with. They don't have. They, they're not even having this kind of conversation. They're not. And let me also let you in on a little secret. They're not all white either. There's some black churches. They're not having this conversation. I wait. Because, because then we make it about ethnicity and it's not. It's about your know-how and do your luya. It's about your doings. Hey, Tammy. About your doings. It's about what you have in place to scale. Let me say that word again. Scale. Churches need to understand that conversation and what that means for their church. Because some of y'all are not ready for a hundred members to walk in the door tomorrow. Some of you are ready for like three. And so you scale to that. And that's all you will be willing to receive. So there are various people. Tamil Curtis. I can list a litany of people that can help you. But you stop, stop operating that way. Do it scared, please. 
Scale. You got you got to want to scale. So if you if you're only expecting, okay, here's an example. Y'all know in church, uh, sometimes they pull out three chairs. And I ain't knocking no church that do it. I just want to give you some psychology behind it. You pull out three chairs. The deacons come out, stand behind and raise their hand to say that you can come to church, come to Christ, come join the fellowship. Three chairs. And then we're surprised when one person shows up. You didn't expect God to move in such a way that 25 would show up. So when I hear us have this conversation about how to scale our complaints about digital uh, technology, what I hear is a lack of faith in an area that God has assigned you to. You just lack faith. I don't have any faith in something that I can't tangibly scale, touch, see, measure. Please say that. Please say that. But have some faith if we're going to be operating in the realm of faith. Have some faith that God can move and send you to help and send you the resources, etc., etc. But y'all got to stop complaining. You got to stop whining. You have the resource. You are the resource. It's in your hand. It's on your brain. It's in your mind. Verbalize it and move ahead. Well, Pat, well, well DK, I don't want to do all that. Well, then you don't want the results. Those of us who take risk experience radical results. But those of us who stay on the porch, you won't see nothing tangible too often. And when it does show up, you're scared of it. Live streaming is your friend. I think some of us need to do some work on our live streams and hire us a consultant or project manager to help us with our live streams so that the sound can be good, so that the quality of the content can be well, and the people watching and experiencing can be blessed. Period, point blank. All of which take a level of investment a level of faith, a level of work that you have to be willing to do. All right. And then we can talk about digital, digital evangelism and how we're using these things socially to market and connect with people. I would love to have a conversation about that. But y'all are so invested heavily into these types of conferences that don't bring you these kind of, this kind of information. You need to invest in information that's going to be transformative. This is transformative. I should be charging y'all $200 a head. Period, point blank. But I'm willing to give this so that people can learn and get better and stop the, stop the complaining. Just, just cut it out. And let's move. Let's go with God. He always sends us what we need when we need it. He never stops providing for us, even in the areas that we lack in understanding. He's always sending stuff for us. Open your heart up, man or woman of God. Open your hands up. Be ready to receive what God is doing and treat it well. Now, when I see live stream and I see digital evangelism, I see social impact, the key component is how we treat people. And it's my last thing and I'm off. And all of this is free flowing. Some of y'all absolutely dislike your volunteers. They're not your partner. You don't care about them. You're not checking on them. And yet you want them to work on a Sunday, usually their day off, for you and for God. Also, that you can talk crazy to them throughout the week and not support them throughout the week. And I check on them throughout the week and not love on them the way you're supposed to. Have you considered that if people show up at 530 in the morning, 630 in the morning to come man your equipment, they deserve some breakfast or something? 
consider that? Or are you just going, you know, not care? A lot of this is a lack of care. We don't care. And we need to improve that. So, again, no big, none of that. I just wanted to speak thoroughly and honestly to some of y'all. If we want God to present us with a harvest, we have to prepare the ground. I love y'all. And if you need me to help you, my inbox is open. Go boldly to that inbox. Ask for help. Don't get mad if I send you an invoice. Or not send you one. Totally my option. But if we want to do better, we got to want to do better. I love y'all.